Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary Sanch and I'm a designer and illustrator living in Canada. By day I work at the Royal Tyrrell Museum. I'm one of the graphic designers there doing graphic design and illustration. I am part of a really great team who works there. And in my spare time, I also like to make paint from locally sourced sustainable minerals from here in the Drumheller Valley. Here I am just putting on some safety equipment. You don't want to breathe this. Uh, that reminds me of, you know, those videos where they used to put like phones in a blender and in a microwave and stuff. Don't breathe this. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so all of the pigments for natural formation paints, which is my paint brand, are hand ground like this by me in a mortar with a pestle. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of an involved process. And it's clearly making the camera shake and everything. It's very noisy. Uh, notice how I have not included the noise from this process, although I did record it. Uh, but I will show you some of it here. I'll insert a clip of the actual noise. And yeah, so that's... That's sort of noisy. Um, I would do a really nice ASMR version if it was actually ASMR, but it's kind of like the opposite of ASMR because it's very annoying. Um, even I don't like it. And even if I were to wear headphones and listen to an audiobook or a podcast or something, you can like feel the vibrations through your skeleton and so it's sort of counterproductive and it doesn't it doesn't even hide the noise it just makes you feel it more than you hear it the rock that i'm grinding today is the ironstone that i use to make ironstone iron oxide which was the first color of paint i ever tested for my paint brand also i just want to say that calling it a brand feels like a little pretentious to me you know uh, if you've been following me for a while you know that this is just basically a hobby you know it's sort of a side hustle except I'm not really hustling about it I'm taking my time I'm putting care into myself first of all as you can see from this process it's very involved and this is just the first step so it's rough on my arms and I've been recovering from some tendon issues in my arms because I can't seem to stop using them uh, which is interesting and speaking of iron oxide it also turned out I had a uh, low iron sort of an iron deficiency going on so we've been taking supplements building up my iron again and i've noticed that i'm a little less achy than i used to be so that's something um and and like a lot of people on the internet lot like a lot of us you know i'm assuming quite a few of the other art youtubers out there also have these issues but you know i'm not a hundred percent healthy like i have uh you know some mental health struggles and some physical hormonal health struggles and uh you know si <laughs> i don't know i get this thing where i talk about it and then i don't feel like it's actually that much of a big deal like maybe i'm blowing it out of proportion but like for real sometimes i'm in so much discomfort and and pain that it hurts to do the things that i love and that's real that's legit that's real and i think i should be allowed to feel upset about it but lately i've been feeling really good so here i am getting back into some paint making i hope you guys don't mind that i'm basically just going to talk to you for 25 minutes i had some requests on a previous video for more longer uploads so yeah i, I mean i don't even know what i'm going to talk about for 25 minutes but uh, i guess we can talk about the paint a little bit more i 
don't know exactly when I will be restocking these paints. So if you follow me on Instagram or follow my shop on Etsy, that's the best way to get notified of when I do upload more paint. Uh, I've just been focusing on different things. I had my Alpha Best Cherry zine printed and those are all sold out online now. I've kept a few to myself just in case some of the packages go missing, but Basically, 45 out of 50 of the zine edition. Uh, I won't be reprinting anymore. But yeah, 45 out of 50 of them are spoken for. They're on their way to their homes. And if any of them get lost in the mail, that's what the extra five are for. Or if they all arrive safe and sound, then I'll sell those ones in person. Either in the future, perhaps, when we have art sales again. Uh, you know, booths and craft fairs and what have you. Um, I'm a bit wary about those at the present moment but in the future definitely I'll still have a few zines around for those of you who are local and uh, yeah but these paints they're never gonna be widely available I don't think that's something I've been thinking about basically if my full-time job holds out forever which I sure hope it will um, I don't expect any more unforeseen circumstances in the future. I mean, I should hope not. Um, but basically, if the paints were to become my full-time job, then yes, there would be more. But they're not right now. I don't expect that making them will ever be a full-time job. Um, but I'll, I'll look into it. Uh, I'll think about it because I, I still think that they're a really great product. Like, I'm not best at the formula quite yet. I'm still working out the kinks of getting things dried, you know, smooth and professional and pretty. Um, but there's probably some charm, maybe, to the, the handmade quality and how rough they are and how uh, organic they are. And there's certainly enough of these uh, stones that I make the pigment out of um, popping out of the literal hills where I live. So <laughs> supply is not an issue. It's just me being a one woman show who um, doesn't have any assistance really. I mean, I could hire people to help me out with these paints, but also um, they're my thing. They're my baby. <laughs> they're my baby. Um, but behind the scenes, I've been working on uh, thinking ahead with the packaging for these and being a little more thoughtful. I had a couple that arrived a bit um, beat up uh, from the November restock, and that was really disheartening to me. Um, I was I was quite upset about it. Um, and I've been, you know, I took a bunch of reviews to heart, and, and I've been thinking about it. So I've got better boxes now, um, boxes to put the boxes in, uh, and it'll all be recyclable. So it'll be a box with some tissue paper inside and then with the paints inside. The next restock as well is going to be kind of special because over the winter I've been collecting uh, bottle caps and jar lids and things like that. So it's going to be a plastic free update made with all um, reused containers. And so I hope that's cool to you guys. Uh, the ones that are big enough will have the uh, sticker with the logo on it. And the ones that are, are too small will just be as they come. So they'll say like cream soda on them or, you know, stuff like that. So I think it'll be neat. Hello, Mina. My cat has just joined me for the voiceover and then she stepped on my keyboard and deleted a bunch of stuff, but thank God for Command Z, am I right? Uh, <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys will enjoy the plastic free reduce, reuse, recycle themed update, um, but it won't be the end of the typical pan sizes since I know those work best with uh, commercially available palettes and stuff like that. So those will return, um, but the upcoming update will be will be sort of a special one. And then if it's popular, I'll, I'll 
collect more containers and do another one of those. So when those appear, I'll, I'll make sure to take good photos of them and uh, uh, advertise for them. And then you guys can let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, so other than that, I have also been doing a lot more writing, both just for fun and uh, in the hopes of getting published in a lit journal or magazine or an anthology or something, I submitted recently to an anthology, uh, a short story that I wrote. So we'll see if that goes through. And if not, I'll submit it to a few other places and then see what happens with that. But the point of that is basically that I'd like to start legitimately working on writing a graphic novel that I could illustrate myself. I do a lot of nature and scientific illustration and there's a lot of that on this channel and obviously I do a lot of it for work that you don't see. But I love stories. I really love stories. I love narratives. Narrative is basically this, the, the strongest form of, of communicating with other people. So I would love to do my own comic. And having worked with my friend uh, Michaela Dawn on her comic contract uh, with a book that will be coming out later this year, I think. I was basically her art assistant. Uh, working on that was difficult, but also inspiring in that I know for sure now that I could definitely put together a book if I put my mind to it and put all the work into it. So how that links up to the short story thing is that I feel like it would legitimize myself as a storyteller if I was already published a few places before pitching a graphic novel to publishers. Does that make sense? I think it does. Um, but yeah, then I can say, hey, I've been published here, here, and here. I'm legit, and people like the stories that I tell. And then that adds a little more validity to whatever comic pitch I put together. So that'll be a long process. Um, I feel like I'm coming to terms with things taking long, 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 long times now. Uh, it's just, it's a, a balance thing, uh, a life balance. I, not work life because my life is work, but like balance between the museum and between being a homeowner and a cat mom and a partner to my boyfriend and a daughter to my parents and you know a friend to my friends and then also doing stuff recreationally like just for fun just hobbies so like knitting and some of the writing that I do uh, collaborative projects and then Adding on to that sort of freelance professional development stuff, which is what this this comic, I guess, sort of counts as. So it's more complicated than, than just like work and play um, because everything is sort of interconnected, just, just like the rest of the universe, you know, like nothing exists in this universe by itself. <laughs> That's a bit metaphysical. Um, but yeah, so that's something else that's sort of on the back burner right now. I guess maybe not the back burner, but like, you know, that burner on your stove that's the smaller one where you like heat up a side dish while you're cooking the main thing. It's on the little burner. It's on the little burner on the side. I guess that is the back burner because it's at the back. Wow. Okay. Well, anyway, it's it's on the stove. It's not quite in the oven yet, um, but I'm I'm working on that. Another thing I'd like to talk about is this new voiceover sound. I finally got an actual proper recording microphone for my voiceovers. It's only taken me like what, like three years of YouTube more. How long have I been uploading? I have no idea, but I finally got a legitimate microphone and I think it sounds really good. 
it's integrated really nicely with Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the editing software that I use. So we're doing little, little professional baby steps towards producing better content. The next step, I guess, would be a new camera or a second camera. Um, but I have very, very cold feet about that idea. So that'll be, that'll be for the future. Um, maybe if somebody gets me a really nice, like freelance gig uh, with a really good paycheck, maybe I'll buy a new camera, but for now, uh, we'll keep going with my old faithful and, uh, see how far that gets us. I also had to buy new doors, um, for my house. It was getting super drafty. I think I mentioned the doors in the other video. Anyway, it's sort of like a, it's a big deal to me buying my own doors, uh, <laughs> it's very adult of me and it's a very hefty adult sum of money that I'm recovering from. So, you know, if you would like to support me, watching this video is a great way to do that. You can also sign up for my Patreon. There isn't a ton of exclusive content on my Patreon. There's wallpapers and printables that you can download and use that are on there. And there's some blog posts and stuff like that. There aren't any exclusive videos so far. Although maybe I'll I'll do that at some point. I know a lot of people are doing like podcasts where they just talk at their patrons. And I guess this is sort of like a podcast. But I don't have too much time to devote to extra video content. So we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll consider it. Um, the Patreon is just like a nice... A nice simple baby Patreon and I'm not going to spam you with updates, but you should know that the proceeds from, from that go towards, you know, me being an artist and having my expenses and uh, buying new stuff like this lovely microphone. I will leave the link to this particular microphone in the description. I got it off of Amazon.ca and it's not... Not too expensive, but it sounds good, I think. Let me know if it sounds good to you guys. Let me know if the volume is good, like if the decibels are, are off to you, like is my video quieter than the other people you watch or is it louder or whatever because, yeah, just let me know. I, I, uh, I'm sensitive about feedback, but also simple things like that are easy to like implement and fix if that makes sense. I've also been trying out some more LUTs, LUTs. They're called lookup tables. It's a fancy sort of video term that, uh, <laughs> that I learned recently. Um, and basically it's automatic color grading that has all these secret color grading numbers built into it. And then it, it makes your footage look way nicer. Oh, look at that beautiful focus on my cardigan. Nice. Um, but yeah, you can also see actually all of the dust that comes off the brush when I, when I finish there, like I tapped it and you saw all the dust. Um, hence why I am wearing a respirator for this process. Yes, I am very wise. I am very smart and I am very safe. Oh, and the beautiful little unicorn planter, by the way, that's from Walmart. So I, I can't, I can't help you there. If, if you love it as much as I love it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it probably doesn't exist. Although I'm sure there, are, there are plenty of other little unicorn planters in the world. And on the theme of unicorns, which somehow I'm going to make relate to actual real life animals. I saw a moose the other day. I live in Canada and I've never seen a moose like up close and I, I doubt, well, I might, I might, but there's a moose that's been hanging around the museum actually and she walked quite closely by the offices the other day and so I got to see her and she was tall and beautiful, absolutely gorgeous animal and it really made my day to 
see a moose like the closest I've ever seen one. I've seen them like far off in the distance, but this was like, you know, I could see the muscle definition and, uh, and all of that. And I, I apologize that my arm is, <laughs> is like taking over these shots, um, you know, with the respirator and everything and trying to actually, you know, get the grinding completed. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't paying like super too much attention to, well, how much my elbow was in the shot, but it's a nice cardigan at least. Like it's cute, right? I got this second hand at a thrift shop. Um, and, uh, I, I love wearing it around the house. I've been wearing it a lot. I think that stitch on the forearm that it, that it loves to focus on, uh, on the upper arm, pardon, is herringbone stitch. And that's one in knitting that I haven't taught myself yet. I've learned quite a few other things, but like herringbone I haven't done yet. And I haven't attempted any cable knitting yet. I do have little cable needles, uh, that I got off of Etsy and they're really quite beautiful, but I haven't decided on which like cable pattern I want to do. I'll probably just do like a hat because that'll be fairly quick and I can learn the concept without investing like way, way, way too much time into it. When I'm learning something new, I, I would prefer to do a shorter project rather than learning cabling in like a whole jumper, right? Because that takes a while. And it also costs a lot of money, um, especially with, with really good yarn. I mean, for, for new techniques as well, I'll often use just some cheaper like acrylic yarn just to get the hang of it uh, and then use my expensive wool yarn. Um, but yeah, I finished a shawl recently in the, in the past uh, week and it's very pretty. It's uh, partly mohair and partly fin sheep wool. And it is so nice. It's light and airy, but it's also like shedding little mohair fluffs everywhere. So I need to break out the lint roller. Now that we're sort of creeping up on the final bit of the footage, I collected this morning. I'll talk a little bit more about the paint again. Uh, the ironstone color is really nice. It's a really rich brown um, and I don't know it's just it's so classic and it's also so nice to be able to go out get the rock from the environment where it was formed and turn it into something that you can use for your art. I find that this one doesn't have the best uh, staying power or staining power. Um, that's the same with all of my paints. You know, the, the granules of the pigment are only as fine as I can get them by hand, you know, so they're not um, mechanically perfect. Uh, and sometimes they'll act a little bit weird on the page, but I think that's part of what makes them unique and um what makes it worthwhile to create them because you know if I'm spending a half an hour to grind half a jar of pigment mind you I, I take breaks in between um and honestly to be perfectly honest it's boring it's really boring and I can't do it for very long because I just like zone out and even if I have an audiobook going usually my attention span is like 15 minutes anyway like half an hour 15 minutes um and it takes oh it takes so long to grind all this pigments but it makes more sense to grind a whole uh 60 milliliters at a time um and then I can just focus on making the paint, which is an entirely different process and requires like more cleaning and what have you. And I have to, you know, wipe off the counter and all of that. But yeah, this is just the iron stone that I ground up today. And here I'm just going to weigh it. So I have an empty jar. I'm setting the scale and then I'm going to weigh the actual amount of the roughly 60 milliliters of pigment that I got. It's not exactly 60 milliliters. 
Um, but it comes out to about 82 grams and here you go. Here's, here's what we did today. Here is the boring, slow, painstaking, um, what's that other word? Tedious. This is my tedious Sunday task that will in the future become beautiful, usable paint. But for now it's dirt. This whole video was me making dirt. I am so glad that any of you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.